In part 2 of the presentation on half-range Fourier series, we investigated the function f of t shown here, t plus 2, defined over the domain 0 to 1. We reflected the graph of the function in the vertical axis, making a symmetric or even function. Then we extended it periodically with period 2. This resulted in a Fourier series that consisted only of a constant and cosine terms. Remember that an even function must be constructed from even trigonometric functions and that means cosines rather than sines. In the last part of our presentation on half-range series we will take the alternative approach. We will turn our f of t into an odd function then extend it periodically. This will mean that our Fourier series will now, con now consist of sines only no constant and no cosines. Let's see what the function looks like after we've done the rotation around the origin by 180 degrees. Drawing this odd extension sometimes gives some people a bit of trouble, so let's investigate it rather carefully. The point on the axis at y equals 2 simply rotates around to negative 2 as we go through 180 degrees. To draw the rest of the straight line on the negative side, we can we will remember that the top of our line on the right is at 1, 3. The positive coordinates there will rotate down to negative coordinates, so the other end of our line will be negative 1, negative 3. We should probably also record the memory that this is an open point. This will give us one period of our function. Just as in the even case, the period is 2, and so the omega in the trigonometric functions will be 2 pi over p, so it will be pi again, just as for the even case. What we now have to do is to take this function and extend it periodically. It's just a matter of copying the same shape over and over again to the right and left. That's not too hard to do, so I've prepared it in advance on the next page. Here's what it looks like. Notice that the function always rotates into itself by 180 degrees. I've not worried too much about the few open points. These are not of any great significance when we do the integrals, though one should, I suppose, try to draw them consistently. Now notice something about this function. Just as for the case of the even function, it now needs two different rules to describe it t plus 2 between 0 and 1, but t minus 2 between negative 1 and 0. The last piece of that equation, where it says f of t plus 2 equals f of t, is just telling us that the function has period 2. We've already talked quite a lot about the symmetry of these functions and the use of different rules, so let's go straight on now and try and find out what the sine series looks like. first thing we can note is that because there are only signs, the a0 must be 0 and the an must be 0. We are entitled to write those down immediately without calculation. If we did the calculations we would find 0, but it would be a big waste of time. Our series now must have the form of a sine series. n equals 1 to infinity, bn sine n omega, but omega is pi t. The b n's are formed from the integral 2 over the period, integral across the period, and we normally take from minus a half the period to, to plus a half the period. Then we need f of t sine n pi dt. I'll just tidy up that limit there that doesn't look very good. In our case the period is 2, so we could immediately rewrite this as just 1 times the integral negative 1 to 1 f of t sine n pi t dt. Let's remember at this point that f of t is odd. 
Now you'll remember that on the earlier page we saw that there were two different rules for f of t. We encountered this problem also when we did the even integrals for the cosine series. But there it turned out not to be a problem. We didn't actually have to know the rule to the left of the vertical axis. That was because the integrand consisted of even times even function. Even times even is again even. What happens this time though in our example now? Well, I just wrote down that f of t is odd. Let's go back and look at that page again. There was the bn, an integral over the whole period, minus 1 to 1, f of t sine n pi t. f of t is odd, but also sine n pi t is odd. So what we've got in the integrand here is odd multiplied by odd function. Do you remember the rule for that? It's analogous to negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Odd times odd is even again. So what we're integrating here actually is an even function once more. That's the function f of t sine n pi t. Now, as before, when integrating an even function, we know the graph of the function reflects symmetrically across the vertical axis. So the area on the left under the graph is equal to the area to the right, the same distance along. The bonus now, therefore, is that we can go back to our integral and we know that the area from negative 1 to 0 will be equal to that from 0 to 1. We could therefore just use 0 to 1 as our integration limits, but to take account of the bit we've now missed out, we just double the integral. Let's write that down now. bn equals 2 times the integral 0 to 1, etc. There it is. What have we gained by doing this? Well, from 0 to 1, f of t has a very specific and unique formula, t plus 2, namely. We can therefore substitute t plus 2 into the integral, and it means we don't have to worry about the other form for f, the t minus 2 part. Let's do that now. And while I'm at it, at the same time, I'm going to get that 2 at the front and cross-multiply it down to the left to get it out of the way. Sometimes that 2 has a habit of getting lost or forgotten or distributing wrongly over brackets. So it's a good idea to leave it out until the very end and then bring it back. So there we have it. The integral is just a basic integration by parts. Linear function times trig. You can either look it up if you're fortunate enough to have tables handy or you do it the long way on paper. If you do have to do it the long way, let me just remind you it's a good idea to leave the t plus 2 as a single entity and not expand out the brackets first. It's more efficient to leave it as it is. This is not meant to be an exercise in integration by parts, so I'm now just going to write down the answer for you. The answer has two terms, and the integration limits to be substituted are 0 to 1. With a bit of experience, you'll start to recognize in some of these terms that they disappear quickly. When a term disappears, it's a good idea to deal with it first and get it out of the way, so it's not on your mind. Look at that sine term. When t is 1, we get sine n pi. Sine of a whole number of pi's is always 0. Similarly, when we substitute t equals 0, we get sine of 0, and that also is 0. So that term disappears. Let's cross it out. That leaves us free to focus our attention on the part that doesn't disappear. First of all, there'll be a minus 1 over n pi. Let's get that out the way at the front. Now when t is 1, t plus 2 will be 3, and we'll have cos n pi. Then we'll have minus for the lower integration limit. When t is 0, we get t plus 2 is 2, and this time cos of 0. Whenever I see a negative at the front, I feel unnerved. It can sometimes get lost or distribute wrongly. I'm going to take it inside with the effect that we reverse the order of the things inside. The less minuses floating around, the better, the safer it is. So now we know that cos of 0 is 1. So we get 2 minus 3, and cos of n pi is negative 1 to the n. So finally, bn, bringing the 2 back up on top, and we 
have the expression. Now that's a generic expression for Bn, but it's going to look different depending on whether n is odd or even. So to get any further, we have to actually make that distinction. If n is even, Bn will be 2 over n pi, 2 minus 3, and negative 1 to an even power is positive, so just 2 minus 3. That makes negative 1 with the final result minus 2 over n pi. On the other hand, if n is odd, Bn is 2 over n pi, 2 minus 3, and this time the power of negative 1 is odd, so that'll be an extra negative sign. That'll make 2 plus 3, which is 5, with the final answer 5 times 2. Let's just write it as 10 over n pi. That's got our Fourier coefficients for the two separate cases, n even or odd. It just remains to put them all into a Fourier series. So our f of t is now. Notice that there's a 1 over pi in both those coefficients, so that can be taken to the front. Then there'll be a sum. Let's look at the even ones first. I'm still going to take my sum over all values of n, that's 1 to infinity. But in order to specifically single out the even ones, b2, b4, b6, etc., I can write minus 2. Instead of n, I write 2n to make sure we've got an even object there. And then sine 2n pi t. Then we do a similar trick with the odd ones. We still sum over all values of n, but we artificially put in an odd value underneath. And I've chosen minus 1 rather than plus 1 or any other odd number in order to make sure that we start at b1 and get all the correct b's with the correct signs. So sine 2n minus 1 pi t. That's a good enough answer, but we could tidy up a little bit, first of all by noticing that a pair of 2's cancels and then that, strictly speaking, we didn't really need two separate sums. We could write the whole thing as sum n equals 1 to infinity. Now we've got minus 1 over n sine 2n pi t plus 10 over 2n minus 1 sine 2n minus 1 pi t and that's the final result for f of t, and that concludes my presentation.